And in hearing the previous speaker speak about effort being made in silence, I think that's more of the problem. So, and because effort, success is not a uh, measure by effort, measure by result. And that's why when some of statistics are read about internet penetration, about e-government, e-governance, and all of that, we're only very low in the mark. Not because we're not making the effort. It will affect us all effort because they're not very well coordinated. We're not achieving the expected level of success. So the first point I would like to advocate is to harmonize all the effort that we made by various ministries and agencies of government. Just yesterday, we got a new ministry. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. <laughs> we got a ministry, now the Ministry of Communication and Digital Commons. A new ministry. Our old ministry now named Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. I'm trying to understand the working actually. Because I don't know whether we should take communication and digital or economy. So I'm trying to understand. I'm sure that my friend Honorable Minister will give us the necessary information when it comes. So I think that part of the task of that ministry particularly when I take the part of digital economies in you, should be to coordinate some of this effort that are being made. However, I must also warn that each of the ministries and agencies, as far as I know, I don't work with government, I'm glad that there are many Singaporean people here. I think each of them have some level of independence, and they want to maintain those autonomies. Yeah. And so in giving their, um, their, their digital access, or their digital role to somebody else. We may have a bit of problem, we may have issues of legislation and all of that, but I think I leave that to people who go into what I have. For those of us in the private sector, when we look at them, looking at efforts that are made by agents of government, they are done by, because they are agents of staff, so each of them does and say, we are this ministry, we are this agency, we don't report to you, and you don't report to us. So he was a good letter to our own people. So we hear those kind of comments. But I hope that our well, new ministry of digital economy, may also assist in putting those efforts together. However, one key point, one key point, is that we can have all these brilliant and academic discussions if we don't take reference to the potential of our infrastructure that is driving infrastructure, we have a major problem. <laughs> so, we can talk about digital, economy, communication, Violence. If you don't protect the driving infrastructure, it's a bigger problem. So I therefore think that taking it from the new name that we got yesterday for our new ministry, that we will now have a Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, that our industry will now be seen as the most critical national infrastructure. I'm hoping so. Because without that, actually, you don't have anything to do. So if the bridge between here and Virala collapses, God forbid, the city is divided into two. So if the link between East and West is, is severe, the country is divided. But this is another means. Today you can live home, with your, live home without your wallet, but you can't live home without your mobile phones. It's impossible. So and imagine that you left home without wallet and now with mobile phones is the only means of access. And all of a sudden the national network is down due to one natural group of people. They will have a problem. So I think the issue of potential of our infrastructure is key. And there should be no conversation around the economy without talking about possession of the critical infrastructure that supports this industry. So for me, again, the second point I would like to make this afternoon is that we need to revisit the issue of critical national infrastructure. And our industry, I said, now that we are now here in Union, should be classified as critical national economy and security infrastructure. And as far as the right of protection, I would even say, when people are phone tampering with this infrastructure, the prescription of penalty should be as severe as long-term prison sentence. Once you have a few cases and a few examples are made, people will begin to remain aware of the fact that this infrastructure that prior powers the economy and drives the, 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 the country should be protected and they will abstain from disrupting the operations. Including that those who work in the sector should be classified as essential services for 